Hey guys, I'm Scott and welcome back to the Dynamics Post. Today we're going to take a look at a new type of replenishment called zone for replenishment. So we'll take a look at that when we get right back. So we've talked about wave demand replenishment before, we've talked about min-max replenishment before. Today we're going to talk about zone threshold replenishment. So what zone threshold replenishment is, it looks at the entire zone when looking to decide if it's going to replenish an item or not. So this is advantageous if you're not really going to use fixed locations and you've got multiple items in a, in a zone or you want an amount of a particular item in a zone, you can use the zone replenishment to do that. Um, so again, it doesn't have, you don't have to use fixed locations for this. I'm, I am using fixed locations on, on some of my location directives, but you don't have to. That's one of the advantages of doing this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at an item that we've set up as a 51515. I've got some inventory in a couple different locations. I've got some overstock in a bulk location. So let's take a look at how we set this up and then how we execute it. Okay, so we'll do that next. All right, so let's take a look at the setup on this one. So we're going to start off with a couple of miscellaneous codes I'm going to set up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to set up a work pool, and this is kind of optional. Um, I'll tell you what we're going to use this for in a minute, but basically underneath work pools, I created a zone and one and zone two work pool. Um, what we're going to use this for is just to show which zone is in, you know, which work is in which zone. Um, so this one's optional, but um, just something I'm going to do here. And then the next code we're going to go ahead and set up is the directive code. So that's going to be under warehouse management. We're going to go set up and then directive codes. Same codes I'm going to set up here. I'm going to set up zone one and two. And those, those will become obvious what we're going to use those for in just a minute. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into location directives. And so we're going to go to warehouse management, set up location directives. And we need to change our work order type to replenishment. And I've, and I've actually got three here. I've got a pick and then two, two puts, all right? So the pick one uh, is for site two, warehouse 24. There's no directive code on this uh, pick one. And basically what it's gonna do is gonna pick from bulk, right? So if I go under my edit query here, I've got a location profile ID of bulk. And I'll show you my inventory before we start there. But um, for right now, just know that the bulk's gonna come from a location profile of bulk. All right, if we go to the put, this put first put here is for zone one. I didn't label it as such, but that's going to be what it's for. And so same thing, we've got a work type of put, site two, warehouse 24. And now this is where I'm using one of my directive codes uh, for uh, zone one. Okay. And then the, the put is in zone one. First is going to look for fixed locations. Then it's going to go look to consolidate. So consolidate, it looks for where the item might already be in the, in the zone, and it's going to put them there. And then in the last one it'll look for is just, it'll look for a picking location, okay? So also important on all of these queries, if we go into the edit query here, notice that under the locations, I've put a zone ID of zone one there, right? So on all three of these, if I click on any of these on the edit query, zone ID is, is zone one, all right? So this is just gonna be for zone one uh, work that gets generated. All right, so we take a look at the other one for zone two, very similar setup. The only difference here is on the directive code, I'm, I'm specifying zone two. And um, got the same rules here on these queries, though I have the zone ID as zone two. So it's going to look for locations in zone two when, the, when this uh, location directive is called. So as far as the location directives, that's all we had need to set up. Now we're going to take a look at work templates. Not a lot to do here. If you already have, have it set up for other replenishment work, not a lot to do here, but I've, I've got this changed up for us so we can see it easier. So where I'm gonna go is gonna go under setup, warehouse management, setup work, and then work templates. And then our work order type is again gonna be replenishment. And normally I would just have this one replenishment here, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to add a work pool to the work template so I could see those on the screen and show you which ones are zone one and which ones are zone two. So I've created two extra work templates here, and this is the only, it's basically a copy of this one. And the only difference here is I've added a work pool of zone one on one and zone two on other. Haven't done anything in the queries or anything, just, just have those work pool IDs on there. All right. So then let's go to the replenishment template now. So if we go to setup and then we go to replenishment and then replenishment template, I've got one here for warehouse 24 zone replenishment. Now the replenishment type is still going to be minimum maximum. Um, and then I've got two lines here. I've got 
a 515-15 zone 1 and a 515-15 zone 2. 515-15 is my item number, okay? So replenishment is going to be each. Here's where I'm specifying my directive code. So on my zone 1 um, replenishment template line, I've got zone 1 specified on zone 2 on my zone 2 line. Here's where I'm specifying the work template. Again, I just want to stress that this work template is not required on this. It's just, just so I can get that work pool on there. And then I've got a minimum and maximum for each of these, right? So the zone one min and max is 125 for the minimum and 250 on the max for the zone one. And then 125 for the min and 500 for the max in zone two, all right? So the others, these items are all just by default. I'm using products, so I'm using their product query. And the warehouse is set. Now, the, it doesn't let you set this warehouse until you pick the replenishment method of zone. So if I click here, normally what we've used, we're used to seeing is that location option there. But once you break zone, you're required to go ahead and put in a warehouse. If you leave it blank, it's going to tell you that you need a warehouse. Okay. So I've picked put zone on both of those. Now, after you save that, these two light up. So you, you always have the select products. So on each of these, I've select, if I go into my select products, I'm just specifying this particular item. Now, normally when you're setting this up, you might set this up as a product group or, or just a different type of grouping or whatever criteria you want your items to, to be um, replenished at for that current uh, min-max level, right? So I'm, but I'm specifying the exact item of uh, 515.15. And then if we click on the zones to replenish, I've specified on this one for zone one. So this is warehouse zone, zone one. And then the same thing for zone two, if I click on uh, select zones replenish, I've got zone two there. And my product selection is the exact same where I've got our 515.15 item there. So let's go ahead and run this. So we have our template set up and let's look at our item first. So let's go to our, our pro release products and look at the inventory. So we're gonna go to uh, product information management and then we're gonna go to release products. And then I'm going to pull up my item number here, 515. And let's just look at the on-hand inventory for on, on that one. All right, so if you look here in my bulk location, so remember I'm choosing location bulk, profile bulk for my um, for my location directive. So I've got in that bulk 011 location, I've got 2100. Pick one, I've got 40. Pick two, I've got 60. Pick three, I've got 40. And pick four, I've got 60. Now for these locations, pick one and pick two are in zone one, and pick three and pick four are in zone two. So one additional thing that I've thrown in here is a location stocking limit. I wanted to see if this would work with location stocking limits, and it does. So if I go to warehouse management underneath the warehouse, and if we go to warehouse stocking limits for my pick locations, let me just filter everything out, out so we can see it, I've added uh, stocking limits for that item. So pick one, the location stocking limits 150, pick two is 150, pick three is 250, and pick four is 300. You're going to see when this uh, when this runs, it's actually going to split up the locations based on on what it can actually fit on on the shelf there. So let's see. To run this, all we're going to do is we're going to run it the same way we do our regular min max. So we're going to be under warehouse management, and then under the replenishment tab, we're going to go to under replenishments. And what you want to make sure is the replenishment template is correct. If yours isn't correct here, you go to the filter, and then you just pick the correct re uh, replenishment template. Okay, so we'll hit OK there. And then we'll go ahead and say OK to run this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the work that was generated off of that. So let's go under Warehouse Management, Work, and All Work. And then we've got four replenishment orders here created. Okay, so if, let's look at the first one here. All right, so this is telling us to take 110 and move it over to the pick one location. So that location had 40 in it, if you remember from before, and it had a stocking limit of 150. So that's why there's, it's just moving 110 at this point, right? And then if we look at the second one, this will be our pick two location. So it's moving an additional 40 to our pick two location, all right? And then we have our zone two here. So if we open this up here, and we're to the pick three, we're moving 210. So there was 40 in that location with a max, uh, with a stocking limit of 250. So it's gonna move 210. And then we're gonna look at this last one. It's gonna move that to pick four for 190, right? And then if I go out here, this is where I was using my work pool ID. So I've got um, zone one and zone two. So you can see that both of those are broken up together. 
So if you're using zones already, you may already have some of those things set up like the directive codes, for example, or the work pools. You may already have that kind of stuff set up um, to use with your zones. So if you already have zones, you may want to take a look at the zone replenishment because like I said, it just it looks at the entire zone and make sure you have enough of, an, of a particular item in the entire zone. You don't have to like specify a specific location for it, okay? So I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you did, please give it a like. That helps the distribution of the video. And I upload a video every week, at least once a week. So if you like this type of content, please go ahead and subscribe. That way you'll get notified when I upload a new video. So I hope, again, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, thanks for watching.